Keanu Reeves as Neo, Lawrence Fishburne as Morpheus, and then of course the Terminator, Schwarzenegger as a Terminator, as a clone, and as the machine Terminator is on the cover of the book. And it's the evolutions of conscious because it's going to shift your consciousness. It's the fourth installment, the evolution, which the poster is talking about because everything evolves and changes. And these are the new changes or the new evolutions that are coming to our world. Thank you. Two more questions. I, I was greatly impacted by Matrix sitting in a hotel room uh, watching it. Well, anyway, so I'll talk to you sometime about that. But in the first uh, movie where Neil gets shot and, and dies in the, the apartment building, and uh, Trinity obviously brings him back to life. I understand Neo being the one, the son. Uh, what is the significance of Trinity having the name Trinity being Trinity, the mother? Trinity, because it's referencing the Trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, or the Holy Spirit. That's why when you see in the Matrix, they're referencing Kiana or Neo as my own personal savior. This is a symbolicism because what I wrote was the second coming of the Christ consciousness, you know, man versus the machines, you know, the, the evolutions of consciousness. So this is what you're experiencing on three different levels. And it's past, present, and future time travel. This is why you would understand it a lot better if you knew that. Go ahead. Well, what was the, so the significance of, of the Trinity being embodied in Trinity as a woman? But more like an angel playing a major role in the background. Because matrix is a Latin word for the woman's womb. It's a 7,000 year old word that comes from the King James's Bible. Hebrew, yeah. You guys are not aware of that, but you can Google this as it speak. Matrix, like I said, the word is 7,000 year old. In Exodus 34th chapter, 19th verse, God says he who opens up the matrix or my children born with souls, including the animals. Because in the future, man would create his own children, which are clones and drones. You know, they will not be born with souls. That's what the matrix is really about. It's hidden in the woman's womb. The stargate, the portal to bring you into this physical world comes from the female, feminine energy of creativity. Is, is Morpheus the, the father figure? Morpheus is the one. The Christ was the only one called the one. Neo is an anagram, a sneaky way of calling him the one. N-E-O-O-N-E. -O -O -E. Neo, one and the same. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because the anagrams hide the truth from you guys. When you look at anagrams, and let me introduce you to some of the anagrams. When you saw the movie Searching for Nemo, it's an anagram for omen. N-E-M-O oh, is nothing but O-M-E-N, omen. Searching for the omen. There's another anagram that you're very familiar with. It's called evil. Evil is an anagram. The real word is live, L-I-V-E. And what's backwards is E-V-I-L, same word. Genesis in the Bible is an anagram. G-E-N-E-S-I-S is no word. But if you flip it around and you make it into two words, it's nothing but it's genes, I-S-G-E-N-E-S. -E -E and in Genesis, which is talking about genes, it's talking about two children being born. God's children was already on the earth. And when the Elohim or the devil or the angels or third of them that fell upon the earth, when they got here and they saw God's children, they said, let us create our own children in our image, mankind, or a kind of man 
but not a living soul. The living soul could only be created in the matrix, which is the woman's womb. When you see in the matrix them going up and down the telephone line, their physical bodies are asleep on the ship. That's because God's children are three-dimensional beings. The first body is the astral body, which comes with blood, water, and spirits. The second body is the physical body that you occupy. It's transportation, just like you go get in your car. The mother is eating from the dirt of the earth, which is fruit, food that's grown from the dirt. She's feeding the baby through the umbilical cord, and it takes nine months or 36 weeks for the second body to be created. The doctor will not perform an abortion at 12 weeks because he's killing a living soul. Because at 12 weeks, the soul, which is vibrations, magnetism, vibrancy, attaches to the physical body at the 12th week. So when the doctor performs an abortion, it's killing a living soul. It's committing murder. But it, that's why at 11 weeks, they will perform the abortion because all they're getting rid of is the waste in a woman's body, the blood that is prepared, that goes away when she does not get pregnant. And the women I hear, they know what I'm speaking on, and some men who are very familiar with this. Any questions on that? Yes, what is it? Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Well, so you're a very conscious being, but a lot of people are not very conscious about this stuff. They've heard of abortions, they've heard of all of this, but there is no doctor, and you need to believe me and ask your doctor to be truthful with you, there is no doctor that can turn a man into a woman. There's two things that are missing. The umbilical cord to feed the baby for nine months and the womb, the matrix. The matrix is a stargate, a portal to bring the baby into this world. Once the baby is, comes out of the womb, it's a hybrid. For nine months, it's breathing and eating of the water. And the mother is feeding it through the umbilical cord. If the baby stays in to 10 months, the baby in the umbilical cord will disappear in 10 months. The baby will die. That's why the baby has to come out at nine months and sometimes a C-section is performed. That is the very reason. Now let me go back to telling you that there are no doctors that can make you into a woman. You're paying him $40,000 to mutilate you. If you cut off your penis, that is your, where you provide the seeds. If you cut that off, you're Frankenstein because now you cannot give anything. Everything that God created was created with purpose. Your fingers have a purpose, your heart, everything on you have a purpose. The things that man create here, the physical things, are created to serve a purpose. Like the seats you're sitting in, like the car you drive, like the house you go in which is sheltered. They serve a purpose, but they have no purpose other than what they serve. So when I go back to telling you that if you go to a doctor and you pay him $40,000, he cannot give you a matrix, a womb, to create, to bring a baby into this world. And a woman cannot be a man even if, it took, if the doctor removed her womb, her matrix. She cannot give any seeds. The whole process of life is the male and the female, the seeds and the egg. Exactly. But why do you guys believe the lie? Why pay somebody $40,000 that cannot undo anything? It makes you a Frankenstein, a monster. What did Frankenstein do 
when his masters created him. He was a serial killer. He couldn't have any children. He had no soul, no compassion, no love. He didn't understand about killing a child. You see, so that's all that's going on there. Any questions? It's the right here. Excuse um, me? This is getting really, really deep. I did not expect it, but I like it. <laughs> well, that's because I love it. I love it. But I wrote The Matrix and The Terminator. And when you read The Matrix 4 book, it gets even deeper and greater than what I'm speaking on. I'm only just giving a taste of, you know, what I've written, but it's phenomenal work. And believe me, all of Hollywood has read The Matrix 4 book. It's been out for seven years since 2010. Warner Brothers offered me $30 million for the script. You think I'm joking? Ask them, call them and ask. There's no lie. Because you know what they're going to make whoever gets Matrix 4? $6 billion, $3 billion in free ticket sales immediately because there's 3 to $4 billion fans around the entire world, globally. Another $1 to $3 billion in 3D because 3D was not even around in 1999 and 2003, 14 years ago. So 3D, where the matrix jump off the screen at you, quantum physics. Go ahead, you were gonna ask the yes, question? Ma so to my perspective, the reason that the matrix was relatable is because I see that a lot of things they put in front of us are not important. And they put those things in front of us so that we won't pay attention to what's really going on. But it's, to, to it's your the understanding, truth. it's a distraction. You you were saying that it's actually like mathematical and hieroglyphic type thing, like literally down to the the science and math of them uh, putting an illusion in front of us. So how deep does that get? And if we were all polymathematicians and we could really see what's going on with our well, this eyes. is the reason why they don't teach you math in school. Mm -hmm. They don't teach you math because you create with math. The universal language is mathematics, not words. Words are nothing but symbolism. A A is nothing but a one, an F is nothing but a five, including musical notes. Musical notes are nothing but numbers and words, numbers, vibrations, energy to create with. So if you understand math, you understand everything I'm saying. You break the codes, you break the encryptions, and you extract the knowledge. But if you don't know math, you will never be a creator. This is why all architects, all inventors, engineers, they create with math. And when they teach you words, words are nothing but spells. That's why you got your butt whipped when you couldn't do your spelling. <laughs> They call spells cast spells. I'm telling you the truth. You never saw it this way because you're consciously been taught to see it another way. But when you came out of the woman's womb, the mother's womb, and to this earth, you had the knowledge of God. You were super smart. But when you went to school, that's where they installed the programs. You learned the witches and the warlocks, anagrams and spells in programs. And you've been indoctrinated in spells all along. Every time you see a billboard, every time you watch the media and read a magazine, newspapers, television, you were indoctrinated with spells and programs. And this is why Morpheus told you the matrix is all around you. You're in an invisible prison that you can't taste or smell or see. That was my question. If we were actually polymathematicians, we knew that stuff, what would we see? Like, what, what would the... You would be able to see? create the most phenomenal stuff if you send your kids to school and let them learn math. They would be able to create the most phenomenal stuff. The Bible has the laws of God in it. They're invisible laws. The, the legal book that lawyers study has a penal code of God in it. There's three books that your kids should know to learn from. That's the math book, the Bible, and the law books. 
they would be phenomenal if they learned from those three books. Because the other books that they're talking about other stuff is just creating illusions and programs and distractions for you guys. But if you want to create, then study math. Because like I told you, the architects build the buildings from a blueprint conceived from math. The engineer builds a car from math. The carpenter builds all kinds of things from mathematics. Any questions? So you said that this future technology, like a gun, can be used for good or bad. What's, what is uh, the consciousness that has to come up in us to stop it from being used by those same banksters that you cannot stop another being from doing a negative or a vicious act. And when people start wars, all you're doing is killing bodies because just like the movie Fallen that Denzel Washington was in, evil jumps right out of that dead body into another living body. The real way to destroy evil is with love. Because an act of violence with violence make you the same as the perpetrator. Yes. You become one in the same. It's true. It is the truth. This is why the law says, if your enemy is hating you, love them. Don't hit them, slap them, curse them, kill them. If someone is persecuting you, you need to pray for them because prayers are the most strongest force in the universe. And if somebody is treating you viciously, horribly, horrendous, then you need to kill them with kindness because these laws really work. They were given for a reason because all the wars in the world, and there's been numerous of them, and look at the cemeteries, they're full of bodies. But did it stop the wars? Did it stop the violence? Did it stop the ignorance? No, they're just killing bodies. But evil still exists because evil is not a physical thing. Evil is an energy that needs to be destroyed with another energy, which is called love, which is the law. Any questions? Any spirit or demon or devil or ghost is not in your physical realm. They need a body to harm your physical body. That's the truth. So if you see something, it doesn't matter. It is not in a body to harm you. You see what I'm saying? Because it has to be in a physical body in order to harm you. You notice that if somebody gets drunk, they, they are consciously gone. They run and kill a lot of people. They wake up in jail and they're like, well, what happened? You just killed some people. I don't remember it. Remember they said in the liquor, in the wine, were spirits. Yeah, you heard them. They call them spirits. Why do you think they're calling them spirits? What do you think happens when you're missing and something has possession, took possession of your body and does a lot of harm? And you wake up and you don't have no memory of that. Well, I saw somebody last night. They were, it was a homeless person, God bless them, but they were obviously on a drug. I don't know what drug they were on. Well, drugs are gateways. Mm -hmm. They're portals to let things in on you. Mm -hmm. The most important thing for you to know is that nothing can cross your threshold unless you invite it in. And how do people invite it in? It's just like the old vampire story, old black and white, when you all seen it at some point in time, or the new ones, they invited evil in to their table, in their home. But the law says evil cannot come in unless you invited it. So what does people do? They do drugs. They go do overabundance of liquor and alcohol. And they lust after flesh, and they start doing all kinds of things that open up portals on you. They dab dabble in witchcraft. 
They dabble in things that is beyond them. But these are gateways and doors. And when you practice them and you don't know what you're doing, or you, you're inviting things in on you. There are lots of people that sleep good to every night. They're not bothered by the war. They're not by, bothered by ISIS. They, they live happily, happy lives because of their thoughts. Their thoughts. Your thoughts dictate what happens to you here. Your thoughts are what create your happiness or your misfortune. And then the act behind your thought carries it out.